the last question uh, as they come forward, how should believers be baptized? The word baptized is not complicated. The word at all, it means to, to be plunged under. So we only do baptism by immersion. So this morning is my great privilege and honor. And, uh, and I'm going to ask after, uh, with the baptism, group, all those who've ever prayed for either one of these two individuals, uh, stand with them as we honor that. We have the family here visiting. And Adam, it's good to see you. I didn't get to speak to you beforehand. I'm just teasing him. Um, but, but I hope that when you hear their testimonies and you hear their hearts, you are filled with as much joy as I was. So Tara, I'll let you go first. Hi, everyone. I'm not the best at public speaking, so there's that. And I cry a lot, so there's that too. But here we go. Um, as early as I can remember, I was in church. I'm thankful for that. I was even baptized as a young person who felt I knew Jesus, and I certainly didn't know of him. However, he was not a priority in my life, and nor was his word. When I was just shy of 18, I attended what I ignorantly called Jesus Camp. I went with my best friend, whose father was a pastor, and thus she was expected to attend. And she practically begged me to go with her, um, and I jokingly went, thinking how silly it was going to be and how childish camp was. Ironically, at this point in my life, I thought I was Christian, and I thought I was already saved. And I did not think I needed Jesus. And I will never forget the attitude I had during the beginning, beginning of camp. I remember thinking, oh, this is going to be great. And all I wanted to do was to be back home with my new boyfriend. I had quickly an attitude adjustment when I found myself truly enjoying being forced um, to read scripture and memorize scripture and that time. For the first time in my life, I was actually immersed in the word. Camp was a solid week of prayer, scripture memorization, reflection, sermons, and of course, worship. And the last night of worship is when I literally felt the Lord reach for my heart. That night, I, among others, stood when the invitation was given and I gave my life to the Lord. The feeling was unlike anything I've ever felt. I was completely humbled before Jesus. I don't remember deciding to stand. I just remember weeping while I found myself standing. And then a surge of immense emotion just overtook me. And the spirit gave me such a fire in my soul and a deep desire to know Jesus. And despite this fire, and despite knowing in the ways in which I was supposed to behave, I returned home to my non-believing boyfriend, and I swiftly fell back into, dis into disobedience. I'm not blaming him, but it's me. And I do not want to go into every detail because we would literally be here all day. But fast forward five years of living in sin. My heart belonged to the Lord. However, I satisfied every flesh-filled desire any chance I was given. I then met Jordan. At the same time, I was engaged to the man I was just speaking of, and I truly thought I was to be with him. Yet my heart felt deeply for Jordan, and I jumped ship. Only five months into this new relationship, I became pregnant, and I felt so broken, embarrassed, and ashamed. I did what I had been neglecting to do for so long, and I hit my knees. I turned to the one who I had been ignoring, and I began praying, repenting, and seeking the Lord silently. For I knew Jordan's position when it came to religion, especially belief in, in Jesus as the sole truth. We fought about Christianity quite a bit. We even thought about how we were going to raise Jace. Divorce was even threatened when I expressed wanting to raise Jace in church. And I never gave up praying for Jordan's heart to be softened and for his eyes to be opened, nor did I stop seeking the Lord for my own life. 
and for my children's lives. Through the power of prayer and God's divine timing, I am alive in Christ and rejoicing with my now Christian husband. Amen. Our desire is that the Lord uses us for his glory and to be the best example of godly parents for our precious children. Amen. Well, that's certainly going to be difficult to follow up. <laughs> Before I start my testimony, I just want to take a quick moment and show some appreciation to some of you in the crowd. For many years, people in this crowd have been praying for me. Um, those who don't know me, I just recently came to belief in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Um, for a long time, I was a non-believer, and those people still prayed for me. Some of those people are people who are very close to me, who I love, who, whom I love dearly. Um, and some are people that I didn't even know at the time. So to those people, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart um, and what a blessing that is in my life. So I'm certainly excited to share my testimony with you today. I pray that it will be a reminder to believers in Christ of God's grace. And perhaps even more so, I pray that it may even manifest the slightest inspiration to any non-believer who may be here today to open their hearts to our Lord. You see, I was not raised in faith. I have no background in the word. Throughout my life, I exalted logic and reason above anything else, as so many of us who are deceived do. It wasn't until I met my wife, Tara, that I was truly challenged with the idea of faith in Christ. Tara grew up with the word. She had faith. I could never understand it for the life of me. Now, I've experienced my fair share of suffering, tragedy, and pain, just as you all have as well. But I found comfort in the thought that I was in control of my life, that I could pick myself up by the bootstraps and carry forward that I could rely on myself alone to overcome. What a fool I was. I'm no stranger to Grace Harvest Baptist. In fact, I visited the church as a non-believer several times over the years. I will always remember my first time attending. Tara and I were still dating and her parents invited us. I didn't want to go, I'll be honest. But like any young, young man infatuated with a beautiful woman, I acquiesced. I had been to churches before in my youth, and they did not really appeal to me, but I remember that grace stuck out more so than any. <laughs> when I first heard Pastor Mark preach the word, I was truly shocked. I thought, what in the world is this guy talking about? Are we back in the Stone Ages? How does he know the truth? Who is he to tell me I'm going to hell or that I'm wrong? What is this, sinners in the hands of an angry God? These people are out of their minds, and I truly believe that. But Tara did not feel the same. On a ride back home, she confessed to me her guilt of straying from the path of her faith. A debate ensued. What initially started as a debate turned into an argument. And I will never forget, when the <laughs> argument subsided, I looked at her and I said, I will never be a Christian. Fast forward a couple of years, and we were married and had our firstborn, Jace. We were lying in bed one night. Again, the Lord is weighing heavy on her heart. She expresses that she wants to start going to church. Of course, my heart of stone resisted, as it always did. But she appealed to me through logic. Ha ha. <laughs> Christianity teaches good morals. It will be great socialization time for Jace, and you won't have to sacrifice much time. And most importantly, it meant something to her greatly. I could not justify a rebuttal. I knew she was right in my heart, and I loved her. So again, I agreed to appease her. But not without making sure she knew that I would never be a Christian. So we began going to church. I thought it was silly, and in the beginning, it confirmed my hostility towards the faith. But as months passed, and we continued to attend, I could not deny there was truth manifesting in what the Word taught. My heart was beginning to open and change. It was a gradual change. And to my dismay, I even began enjoying church. Did not expect that. But if you had asked me at that time if I believed in Christ, no, I did not. 
Life circumstances created a situation in which we had to consider moving. Tara wanted to, and I did not. And honestly, I did not know the path forward. So for the first time in my adult life, I fell to my knees and I prayed to the Lord. I'll be honest, it wasn't a very good prayer. I had no idea what I was doing. But I asked for guidance anyways. I asked for him to speak to me. I promised that I would listen and obey if he did. And God did speak. So we took a risk and we moved. We listened to God. We kept listening to the Lord. He brought us to Amelia. He led us here to Grace Harvest. And how fitting. My least favorite church while a slave to sin. <laughs> the place that confirmed in my mind more so than any that I would never be a Christian. Yet here I am. Here I stand before you with an open heart ready to serve our Lord. Excited to learn more and more of God's word as I begin my sanctification walk. And through God's grace, through his grace, with great joy, I am able to stand before you and claim that I am a Christian. Thank you. Pray for Tara. If you know Tara, you love Tara, please stand up and uh, as we honor the family and folks who are here. Um, what a blessing, what a privilege it is uh, to baptize you as my sister in Christ. Upon your profession of faith, Tara, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> testimonies, but to be able to baptize a husband and wife as they start their journey together, what a witness and what a testimony. And I would encourage all of you to continue to pray for them uh, as they begin their journey uh, together here at Grace Harvest as members of our church, and may the Lord bless them as they do so. Upon your profession of faith, Jordan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.